DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is name. N-A-M-E. And now, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win $2,000, and tonight maybe somebody will win $10,000. Uh, George? Well, Groucho, Mrs. May Bazell is all set to play You Bet Your Life, and her partner is one of the world's best-known authors, Mr. C.S. Forrester. So, folks, you can please and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50. It's a common way, it's something you always have with you. Mr. Forrester, it's nice to know you. I've read every one of your books, and I want to know, I think Horatio Alger is an inspiration to every red-blooded, <laughs> every red-blooded boy in America. Yes, it's Horatio Hornblower, not Horatio Alger, you know. Well, on, on this show, the only Hornblower is me. <laughs> now, what does the CS stand for, Mr. Forrester? Cold salmon? No, no, my name's Cecil Scott Forrester. What? <laughs> Well, you just said the secret word, cold salmon. So uh, you win $50 and your partner here win $50. The word tonight is name. Where are you from, uh, CS? I was born in Cairo, Egypt. You were born in Cairo? Yeah. I'm a British subject. Oh. My father was a British government servant. <laughs> well, where did you go after you left uh, Egypt? I went and I lived in England then. Oh. Are you still living in England? No, I live in Berkeley, California now. Oh, Berkeley, huh? Why do they call it Berkeley? In England, they call it Berkeley, California, don't yes, they? Yes, some snobs started that fashion about 200 years ago. Now, uh, what have you got against Southern California? Why do you live up north in Berkeley? You don't mind if I call it Berkeley? Huh? Yeah, oh, I... My Berkeley is worse than my Berkeley, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, down here, your weather's too regular. I like to have to look out of the window you and think... to see what the weather's doing. You want more uh, extemporaneous weather. That's that quite it? right. It's the exact right word. Oh. It's sheer luck that I had that word. <laughs> now, I know the audience is interested, and I'd like to discuss your old friend, Captain Horatio Hornblower. How many Hornblower books have been sold? Oh, there have been eight volumes, about two million copies. Two million copies. Huh? Do you have any advice for people who want to write? Oh, yes. The best thing to do is to write, I think. Well, that ought to stop a lot of people cold, <laughs> including a lot of writers. <laughs> what was your last book, uh, Horatia? I'd rather you said my latest book, you know. Well, your latest uh, book, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fine point, but I get the distinction. Uh, uh, the Age of Fighting Sale. It's a uh, history of the War of 1812. Uh, what is your name again? May Bazell. May Bazell. Are you related to Eddie Bazell, the famous director? Uh, I'm afraid not. <laughs> I wish I were. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be afraid of it if I were you. He happens to be a very nice man. Where are you from, May? Uh, I was born in Kentucky mm. and raised in Ohio. Are you married, May? <laughs> yes, I am. How did you meet your uh, husband? Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care as long as we keep the ball bouncing. <laughs> How many times have you been married? Twice. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Well, it's been fun talking to you two, but now it's time to play your bet your life. You both know how to play the game? Huh? Yes. All right, well, let's see how you do in the quiz. Remember your partners. We want one answer between you on all questions. You selected a dictionary quiz. Why, well, you dirty crook, you. Huh? <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you some questions, and if you miss two in a row, you're, you're through. And if you get four in a row right, you win $1,000 plus a chance later of doubling your money. All right, now what is a carbine? It's a, s a small rifle. Yeah, that's right, or a musket, yes, either one. <laughs> we have one right, three more, and you'll have $1,000. I had a frankfurter with musket this morning. Now what is a, <laughs> what is a mastiff? Yeah, would you say it again? A mastiff, M-A-S-T-I-F-F. -F. Big dog, big dog. <laughs> It's a big dog. I would say a large dog, <laughs> yes. 
Two right, and you're on your way to your thousand. All right, now what is a javelin? A spear that you throw. A spear that you throw. Well, you don't necessarily have to throw it. It's a spear. Huh? Uh, you you have can retain it if you want to. Huh? You have three right, one more, and you'll have your thousand dollars. I thought javelin was a cup of coffee. Now, uh, <clears throat> what is a spigot? It's a tap in a barrel. Uh, you're too smart for us, <laughs> Mr. Hornblow, and you've won a thousand dollars. Now you can keep that thousand and quit, or else you can come back at the end of the show and try to double your money. You might even get a chance at ten thousand dollars. You bet your life. In the old days, you had to shift gears with clumsy controls like this. It wasn't easy. Later, the gear shift moved up in the world to the steering column. And then automatic transmissions brought complicated dials and levers that were impressive, but sometimes confusing. But now, here's the quickest, smoothest, easiest method of drive selection ever invented. DeSoto's great new push-button driving. A positive mechanical control. To put the car in any driving range, just push a button and go. DeSoto push-button driving is safer, too. It's out of children's reach, and it's designed so you can't make a mistake. Push-button driving is easier and safer. And to see just how fast and smooth it is, watch this professional stunt driver. Now, push-button driving is such an obvious improvement, competing cars will imitate it next year or the year after. But DeSoto has push-button driving now, so why wait? Tomorrow, drive a beautiful new DeSoto with push-button driving. You can enjoy the best this summer. Drive and price a DeSoto tomorrow. Groucho, here are Eileen Thomas and Elmer von Scheibel. We'd like to play You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and you win an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Eileen Thomas and Elmer von Scrabble. A charming couple indeed. <laughs> Elmer, I guess I'd better start with you. If I just leave you standing there, you might take off. <laughs> How tall are you, Elmer? Six foot seven inches tall, I guess, huh? You're a pretty long fellow. Yeah. That's oh. a pretty long haircut you've got there, too. <laughs> hey, you're, uh... You're Elmer von Scrabble? That's not me, here. No, you're Eileen Thomas. Well, you right. must be. That's all I have left. <laughs> now, is that Miss Thomas or Mrs. Thomas? Miss. Miss. Well, a miss is as good as a mile. And on a lonely night, considerably better. Huh? <laughs> Where are you from, Eileen? I'm from... I was born six miles from London in a place called Highgate. Highgate, huh? Is that anywhere near Lowbridge? No. <laughs> well, just where is Highgate? It's about six miles from London, oh. from the heart of London. I lived there for 17 years until I was bombed during the war. Then I you, moved to You a were on the bomb for 16 years? <laughs> Wileen, you have a very unusual accent. Do people in England ever comment about it? Well, no, they all speak the same way there. Really? Really. I'm surprised you can understand each other. <laughs> no wonder you all drive on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> You know, I've done that, too, since I've been here. Uh, <laughs> How do you do in London, dear? Did you have a job there? Yes, I first worked for Lloyd's of London. Oh, Lloyd's of London, I know them very well. As a matter of fact, I have a policy with them right now. If I'm torpedoed by a submarine at Hollywood and Vine, I get $8 a week for the rest of my life. <laughs> What else did you do in London? Then? Well, then I went to the Ministry of Information and worked as a secretary there. And what did you do after that? Then I went to work for Tyrone Power as his secretary. Tyrone Power? Did you like that? Loved it. Mm -hmm. Then who did you work for? Then I went as secretary co companion to Ava Gardner. Now you're talking, Kate. <laughs> How would you like your job with Ava? Loved it. Exciting? Very. She went to... Did she mention me at all? <laughs> well, yes, she did, talking about the old movies. <laughs> hmm. 
Are you in California on a visit, or are you are you working here? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm here. I'm working as a secretary to Eddie Fisher. <laughs> Who? Eddie Fisher. What does he do? <laughs> well, he uh, dances, sings. Is he very popular? Well, I would think he was probably the America's greatest singer. You happen to be speaking to You happen to be speaking to the head rock of the Elvis Presley Rock and Roll Club. <laughs> Wouldn't you find it more exciting working with Elvis Presley? No, I don't think so. Don't you like him? You know, I've never seen him. You don't have to see him to dislike him. <laughs> so you work with Eddie Fisher, eh? You know, every teenager in America would give her left arm and her white saddle shoes for your job. When he gives you dictation, do you squeal and squirm? Well, hardly, Groucho, but you see, I'm not really a teenager. How old are you? Thirty-three. You can squeal when you're 33. But not taking I've heard him squeal at 50. <laughs> well, what are your duties as uh, Eddie Fisher's secretary? Answer the telephones, make his appointment, help out. very busy? Yes, he's very busy. And I help uh, send out about 2,000 fan letters a week. Mm. He gets 2,000 fan letters a week? Sometimes more. Certainly doing better than me. Well, I've had one fan letter in the last three months. A fellow wrote me and asked me where he could buy an Essex. Did you have many fan letters when you were 28? I used to get a lot of threatening mail years ago. <laughs> Most of my fans are too old now to be able to sit down and write. <laughs> they can't see the paper anymore. How old is Eddie? 28. 28. Well, he can't last forever. I've seen him come and go, you know. I've sat on this stool all the way from Sarah Bernhardt to Wyatt Earp. <laughs> Eileen, what are your plans for the future? Are you eventually heading back uh, to London? No, I love it here. I'm very happy here. I have a boyfriend here, so I'm going oh, to stay I'll and see. take out American citizenship, well, I so, hope. Well, I hope so to you. Uh, you won't get homesick here. Every night on television, you can watch all English movies. <laughs> By the way, what do you get on TV in England? Uh, more old English movies? No, more old American movies. <laughs> well, you survived the Blitz. I'm sure you can survive that. <laughs> Elma, let's get back to you. Do you have a nickname, or should I keep calling you Elma? No, uh, uh Groucho, they call me Slim or Snowdrift. <laughs> they call you Slim? <laughs> How old are you, Slim? I'm 44. 44? Are you married? Yes, Groucho, I'm married. How long? Uh, well, sort of new at it, since uh, May the uh, 10th of this year. What do you think of it? It's all right. <laughs> new, you were there. Uh, yes, sir. Your head is really in the clouds. <laughs> You're 44 and you just got married last May? Yes, sir. Are you sorry that you marked time for such a long period? Well, uh, no, I didn't exactly mark time. I've done it twice before. <laughs> You weren't marking time, you were doing time. <laughs> <laughs> Is your wife as tall as you are? No, she's just a shrimp. She's only five foot four. Where do you live, Mr. Von Schiavo? Uh, I live in the capital of uh, the state of Nevada, which is Carson City. Is Carson City still in Nevada? <laughs> no, I read someplace that Las Vegas had given Carson City three days to get out of the state. <laughs> I admit it's small, but not quite that small. <laughs> Is it as small as your wife? I so, uh, was larger than that. <laughs> what is it like in Carson City? What kind of a place do you live in up there? Well, I don't exactly live in town. I live out uh, in the, you might say, the sticks about five and a half miles from town. On account of uh, my wife and 23 huskies, or 21 huskies, I should say. You have 23, 21 20, kids? 21, 21. You've been married since May and you have 21 kids? No, not 21 kids. With that long hair, your name wouldn't be Samson, would it? 
<laughs> well, Slim, you better explain these 21 kids. Well, they're not 21 kids, Groucho. Would you they're... like that a secretary like <laughs> That'd be nice. <laughs> they're, uh, Would 20... you give up a couple of the uh, whatever you got there for Eileen? Mmm. Well. <laughs> you got <one> spot now. <laughs> I you said know. I was just married, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, she's up there on the stick. She won't know anything. <laughs> yeah, but then when I get back, I'm afraid she's listening. <laughs> Schlemiel, don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you better explain Guess these I'd 21 kids. <laughs> well, that's uh, 21 huskies. Uh, her si Siberian husky uh, sled dogs. Oh, that makes sense. The Nevada desert is certainly the place for sled dogs. There you I don't know where else you would have them. What do you need 21 Siberian Huskies for? Couldn't you get along with just, say, uh, 19? No, I'll grab to the Do you think she's very cute? Uh... <laughs> I ain't gonna last this out, I'm afraid. <laughs> spot now. <laughs> Elmer, Slim, I want to ask you a question. What's Suppose you went back to the sticks with Eileen and introduced her to your wife as your secretary. What would her reaction be? You mean whose reaction? Eileen's or my wife? No. <laughs> your wife, your wife's reaction. Well, the closest thing I could think of would be past history when Vesuvius went up. I wasn't present at the moment. Just, uh, well, I mean, uh, the explosion that occurred then would be second rate, I believe, to the missus. <laughs> I mean, with uh, 21 huskies jumping at your throat. Why do, you, why do you need all these mutts for up there? Well, uh, Groucho, I, I use these mutts or dogs or huskies, whatever you want to call them, uh, for rescue work. Uh, primarily, that is their, uh, their work in the high Sierras. Also, I go on um, demonstrations and in fairs and lectures on the dogs, about the dogs. When you get a flash that somebody's stranded in the snow, do you come bounding up the slopes with a keg of brandy around your neck? Yeah? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, uh, gotcha. That, well, do you uh... drink it before you get there? <laughs> <laughs> just give them the empty keg. <laughs> You know what they say, you can't have your keg and eat it. <laughs> Nobody ever said that either. No. The base cannot. It's a, you can have both. Yes, you can. Uh, we don't use uh, brandy because after a shot of brandy or after giving a patient or a victim brandy, he will be colder within a half an hour than he was previous to the time that he drank the brandy. But we give him soup. After a half hour with a keg of brandy, who cares if he's cold? <laughs> Well, that's true, too. <laughs> Slim, your job is pretty risky, isn't it? I've been up in the high Sierras in the winter, and it's like the North Pole. Do you ever get scared up there? Well... You see those snowy wastes? Yes, you do. Well, don't uh, the girls up there have snowy wastes? <laughs> Can't we leave the women out of this? <laughs> <laughs> You're getting we me can, but it'll be right dull. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, when I start to uh, say that uh, it might be cold, and I am scared, there's times I am scared, but uh, of all the deaths, that would be the most pleasant death, the way to die. What, by the, the freezing of brandy? Death. No, by freezing to death. Freezing to death is freezing a pleasant death. way to die? Yes. Yes, on uh, any person that I've ever seen that has frozen to death. Well, how do you, what makes you such an authority? Have you ever done it? Not myself, no, but I have worked with them that have been dead. And, uh... That was... well, that's good. At least you don't have to pay them a salary. I mean, I have worked with those who are already dead. <laughs> or does that sound worse? <laughs> a pretty fast crowd you go around with. <laughs> Well, you're a charming couple, and it's been most interesting talking to you two. Now, uh, we're going to play... Uh, you selected popular music of the last 20 years. You both know how to play this game, huh? You bet you like uh -huh. it. Jack Meekin, 
We'll play some tunes and you name them. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000 plus a chance later of doubling your money. <laughs> Remember, just one answer between you. Good luck and here we go. What is this tune? Play, Jack. <clears throat> Beautiful tune. Don't know the title. No other love have I. You should have known that. Well, that's one wrong. Don't get another one wrong in a row, or you'll be all finished. Now, don't get another one wrong. Identify this one. Play it. Think of the tune. Very popular song. You came out of nowhere. What is it, audience? Yeah. Canadian sunset. That's oh, right. Canadian sunset. <laughs> I'm sorry you missed two in a row, so you're I'm all through. We don't want you to go away empty handed. I'm going to ask you one more question for $100. Are you right here? You have? Yeah. Of what country is Mexico City the capital? <laughs> Mexico, Mexico. Don't be confused. Mexico. I'm sorry you didn't win more, but I thanks anyway. Too. You're very pretty, and you were a charming couple, and we enjoyed you, having you here. This is the California desert, a real desert of deep, loose sand, treacherous soft shoulders, blistering heat. And this is a lovely 1954 DeSoto automatic on the desert road. Now watch. We're driving this DeSoto automatic out into the sand. In an ordinary car, it would be almost impossible to move or steer in this type of sand. Watch this, though. The world's newest and finest fully automatic transmission, Power Flight Transmission, lets the DeSoto Automatic accelerate smoothly, steadily, evenly with great power, even here. And steering is simple, even through heavy, treacherous sand, with DeSoto full-time power steering. The power steering that works for you all the time makes turning the steering wheel as easy as dialing a phone. There are hundreds of reasons why this lovely 1954 DeSoto deserves the name automatic. Reasons you should discover for yourself. Go to your DeSoto Plymouth dealer soon. See and drive the beautiful, stylish, distinctive 1954 DeSoto automatic. It's available in two full series the mighty 170 horsepower Fire Dome 8 and the brilliant Power Master 6. Convince yourself that this year, DeSoto puts you ahead automatically. Now, Groucho, here's how we stand in the race for the big money. Eileen Thomas and Slim Von Scheibel, of course, missed two in a row, so they are ineligible. However, our first couple, C.S. Forrester and Mae Bazell, won their $1,000, and they have decided to try for $10,000. Bring those, come on, please. Why, Harris, I didn't know you were a gambler, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right, you've decided to go for the big question. Remember, if you miss it, you wind up with $500 for the night. Now, are you still going to go for the big money? Yes. Now, here's the way it works. We have this big wheel here. There are 10 numbers on it. I want you to get together and pick a number, any number you want, from 1 to 10. Take a number. Now, you turn the wheel. We have nothing Number two. Now, one of you is going to spend the wheel. If any number besides the one you pick comes up, the question is worth $2,000. However, if your number comes up, the question is worth $10,000. Okay? One of you spend the wheel. Number two. Yes. Number two. All right. <laughs> your number was 10, and it landed on uh, 10. No, number two. The number two, and it landed on 10. <laughs> so this question is worth $2,000. Right? When McKinley was assassinated, Teddy Roosevelt succeeded him. For $2,000, who succeeded James Garfield when he was assassinated? Chester Arthur. I thought you were an Englishman. <laughs> That's right, Chester Arthur. <laughs> I thought you were an Englishman. Yeah, I'm an Anglo. You're, you're a big phony. You've probably been living in Berkeley since you were born. 
<laughs> what are you going to do with all that money? I'm giving it to the uh, Naval Relief. Oh, you wouldn't consider giving it to me, huh? No. <laughs> Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars. The outstanding 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth, America's best buy low price car. DeSoto, Plymouth, both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth Teacher. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.